Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, today I got a video for you that is a long time in coming, just because it's been a long time since I could get, you know, to, to be able to get to it. Um, today I want to talk to you about some of the lovely stuff that has arrived on my table in the last month or so that I have not had any moments to fill. So, um, first off, a little bit of background. A, thanks to my Patreon patrons who make the channel possible still, as well as thanks to some of the makers who sent some of this gear along. But basically, I have been unable to film a video for the better part of the month because well, Rona came and visited our household about a month ago, and oh my god. First the wife got it, then I got it, then I had it, then I rebounded again, which oh my god, I, I do not recommend. Zero out of ten, not a freaking gem. Ugh, nasty, nasty stuff. But for the very first time in about a month, I have had the energy and time to sit down and film a video. And it's just one video because I'm still recovering from, you know, work work. And uh, Anyways, so as a result, though, I have fallen way behind in terms of things that I've been hoping to review and to show off to people. So I wanted to take some time and show people some stuff that's arrived on my table that's really interesting, that's really great, uh, but that I haven't had any moments to talk about. Um, and to do anything more formal with. So, and by the way, COVID brain fog, that's a real thing, right? So if I'm a little discombobulated, that's what we're still dealing with. But anyways, so I want to show you some cool stuff. To start off with, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start off with a, a nice uh, surge of, uh, well, surge. This is the Surge Knives Trisect. Uh, Serge Panchenko is a designer. He's a really cool designer. He does watches like this guy. He does knives. He does a lot of cool stuff. And this is one of his latest production pieces, and it's neat. Right? This guy's coming in at 375 which is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but it is also M390. It's also done relatively well. Not the thinnest edge ever, but not. Uh, but it's pretty respectable. And honestly, the thing that's shocking about this is like you take a look at it, and you're just like, oh my god, this is... This is going to have the ergonomics of a sea urchin, but in reality, it actually works. And I, it's kind of bizarre, right? There's a little, this hollow here is a little bit weird, but it makes for amazing lock bar access. This is a knife that is actually quite nice in the hand. Uh, and I did not expect to say that. It is a big, big knife. It is a beefy boy. I'll throw this guy up next to the PM2 here. What we're going to see is, yeah, beefy freaking boy right here. But at the same time, it's a cool piece. Another thing worth noting is this is an inlay here. This isn't just more titanium. It's very subtle, given that it's like a shred carbon fiber. But it's it's just a cool piece. I don't think it's going to be the piece for everybody, mind you. But I think it's a cool piece. And I think it's going to be something that's going to be interesting to a bunch of folks who really like Serge's aesthetic. And, you know, uh, yeah, I can't wait to do a full review of it once I'm, you know, feeling up to doing full reviews of any damn thing. Another Serge piece that I'm actually a little bit more hesitant about is this little guy. <clears throat> this right here is Serge Panchenko. This is his uh, slip joint uh, utility blade holder. And this has a lot of nice stuff to it, right? The, the action on it is very crispy, I gotta say. And the safety of it is very good because this area is unsharpened. So you can just put your fingers right here and use this like you would for any other thing. And that's kind of a beautiful thing itself. Um, and it is a very nice way of getting a super, super thin blade uh, that it, with a very thin edge in your pocket at any given time that you can replace rather than having to resharpen. It does, though, have one big, big downside to it, and that is the way that it is holding this utility blade is a little bit weird with this part sticking out and also with the fact that this and this are screws, right? In order to change the blade around, to swap the blade around, you actually need to unscrew here and here and then flip it over there. And that's not necessarily as useful as a utility blade generally is because then you have to carry this as well as a Torx T6, I believe. Uh, yeah, as well as a Torx T6 driver, and that may not necessarily be something that you've, uh, that you got so handy, right? Um, the other weird thing about it is that when this is in your pocket, the, uh, this corner is kind of sticking out out there, and Serge actually showed me that you can kind of round that off, and yeah, of course you can with a sharpening stone, you can do that, but the problem is, once you do that, then the blade won't be reversible anymore, you can't stick it inside there, so that's kind of awkward, too, right? So it's kind of a cool piece, and I can see somebody who really wants wants this really thin blade with a whole bunch of plunge, which is why, you know, this is actually relatively thin even in the part holding the blade. So I can see it being interesting for some people, but for, I think for a lot of people, there may be other utility blade holders that are going to be a little bit more interesting that don't have those downsides, but they could be benefits for somebody. 
<coughs> Pardon me. Another piece of gear actually from Surge um, th that is actually really cool is the Surge Watches Model 3 here. Model 3 is a follow-up, of course, to the Model 1, which is this little guy right here. Well, this big old guy. I mean, thickness comparison? Wow. Uh, and to the Model 2, which is also a beefy boy, if you are keeping track at home. Um, the Model 3 is a much more thin and svelte version. For what it's worth, this bracelet here is one that I've added after the fact. It ships on a very, very thin uh, leather bracelet, one of these guys, right? And those are great for a lot of folks on my relatively small wrist. It ends up feeling very uncomfortable. But at the same time, um, so I've been wearing it on this Amazon steel bracelet, which I think actually works pretty well for it. But nonetheless, um, it is a very nice little watch. Um, it continues the Surge aesthetic of having replaceable inlays, right? You can unscrew, 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 swap out other inlays, which is great. It has quite good loom, actually. I'll charge it here off camera, and what we're going to see here is uh, yeah, that's that's illuminated. Um, that's a beautiful thing. By the way, if you're noticing the lighting is different, I'm trying some other lights actually that were uh, sent to me by my uh, my buddy Mike. So I appreciate that. Um, and let me know in the comments what you think of the lighting. If it was better, worse, or indifferent. Curious. But anyways, so I am a bit a big, big fan of this watch, right? Um, it is absolutely not cheap, and it is absolutely an aesthetic, right? There are a lot of folks who are going to find this not to their taste, but for me, it actually works quite well. I like it a lot. Um, and it's been sharing some wrist time. It's been getting some substantial carry along with this guy, actually. This is the Greg Stevens design. Um, this is the um, GSM-5, uh, and this is the, the, the bronze one. I, I mentioned this in my uh, Gear of the Year video. This is a, yeah, I'm keeping this. This is a really, really good piece, right? Um, it just it adds something a little different to my collection. The loom on it is absolutely wild. And, uh, you know, it, it's a solid piece. And it's just a nice minimalist but also kind of cool thing. And, again, I'm wearing this on a Nick Mankey hook strap. Uh, I kind of wish I had one that had the bronze hardware. But it just that's what fits my wrist a little better, right? The original strap, although it has nice um, bronze to it, is, uh, again, super thick leather, not my seam. But anyways, so there's that. And, actually, one more watch while we're at it. This is a weird one. This is a watch from BRS, like Blade Runner Systems, like the, the Bally people, right? Um, and it originally comes on a bracelet. The bracelet, I'm going to come out and just say, is hot garbage. Um, it is a bad bracelet. It is very, very cheap. It is uh, not actually adjustable down to the size of my wrist. Um, it's just not a very good bracelet, but I threw it on a Nick Mankey hook strap, but you could put it on any other thing because it has a standard lug width here of, oh, let's go ahead and measure it out. I want to say 20, uh, yep, 20 millimeter, but here's the thing, this has very nice applied indices, this has very nice loom, right, it has a Seiko movement in it with a date and everything like that, uh, it has, you know, it's, it's reasonably sized, this is a 39 millimeter model, it has a cool case with these little extra bits up here at the top there, but most importantly, 200 bucks. Now, 200 bucks is a lot of money to spend on a watch, but in terms of mechanical wristwatch, this is one of the better values I've come across, uh, it's certainly in a while, right? You can get some good stuff in the, you know, you used to get some good stuff from Seiko in that range. They've since migrated up the range in price, not necessarily in quality, but, uh, and so this is actually remarkably good for the cost. I am, why? Automatic! Like, yes, we know it's automatic, thank you, but come on, that's ridiculous, but every other part of it is pretty damn nice, and even the bezel feel is actually pretty solid. This is a remarkably good value for a watch, and it's one that I've actually found myself just throwing on periodically. I like the size of it a lot. This is a good 39-inch size. They also have a larger one uh, as well, um, but and I, they have some other color patterns as well. It's, uh, it's kind of limited, but they've been talking about making more of them, and I kind of hope they do, because this could very easily be a, a budget sort of friendly standard for the EDC world. Okay, um, next up, I got a weird one. This is um, Winter Blade Co., and I think I've shown this off before, but this is the Mirage model, and this was actually released early in winter, uh, but uh, it's been a little nuts, people. Sorry about that. Um, but this is a knife that is uh, from the same person who did the Winter Blade Co. Factor, but this is a, uh, this is, there's no, like, push lever in the back here. This instead opens and closes, either with the blade handle, which you can do that way, or using a magnetic assist. You pull this back, 
and the knife partially pops open. It's not strong enough that it is an automatic full-on, although, legally speaking, talk to your lawyer, because having a button that you pull back to actuate the action could very easily be uh, fit definitions in your local municipality. But nonetheless, um, it's an interesting piece, right? Um, it has a nice thin edge, it has a nice blade, it has a bunch of cool stuff there, um, but it is a little bit less wild than the uh, Factor. And so as a result, I don't know that it's going to be for everybody. Right, I don't know that it'll have the same out of left field appeal that the fact it did, but it is a nice daily carry knife, and uh, it's certainly an interesting follow up. I would have blade co, although I kind of hope the next one is way more exotic still. I um, I think he's at his best when doing wild stuff. Um, okay, here's a new brand entirely that's come up. This is Iconic Knives. Iconic is a, a, well, a new brand, I just said that, using officially licensed designs from relatively well-known designers. And I'm going to go on ahead and say, all three of these are from designers that I have featured on the channel before. But a big part of their goal is to uh, put uh, budget-friendly knife uh, versions of knives from very well-known makers. Basically, they want to recruit big names in the knife-making world and give them an option to make a budget-friendly version. These are all overseas made. Um, they want to make budget-friendly versions of these knives uh, for the uh, for the general public, so to speak. People who might never be able to buy one of those pieces um, might still be able to get one from Iconic, and I think that's a really cool goal. I think it's very interesting. So, um, spoiler alert, this guy right here is a Brian the Doe design, actually. Sharp by design, you can see that's a kind of, a, and the clip as well, are, are sort of uh, gesturing that way. Um, this little guy, this one's actually very hard to guess, I think, but this was actually by H. HEA Designs, uh, Sam, uh, who has done some really cool stuff in the past that I've shown off on the channel. This is one of his pieces. And then this one in the middle here is, I think, sort of easy mode for this. This is a Chavez. Um, there's no skull here, which I think is a good thing, but it very much looks like a Chavez, and it's got a nice thin edge and whatnot. My only beef, actually, with any of these knives, they, and given I haven't done the full review yet, they are a little bit close to the edge. Like in the back here, this, that's a little bit creepy, as well as this. I think they have, uh, they, they've they've not yet learned the lesson to keep the blade edge. They're trying to pack a lot of blade into these handles. And as a result, these are blade edges that you can touch. That's not great. But I do very much like the idea of working with very well-known designers and getting budget models out there because that's a good thing for the designer because they can get a revenue stream as well as they can put their stuff in the hands of somebody who goes, I really love my iconic Chavez. Maybe just maybe I should look at one, you know, start saving up towards one of the big, uh, you know, one of the full lines, towards one of the um, customs, one of the bigger production stuff. I think that's a cool idea, and I think it has the benefit to benefit the, com or I'm sorry, the potential to benefit the, the brain fog is real, just saying, um, to, to benefit the community as well as these knife makers, as well as, well, giving us a new budget alternative that is really focused on good designs, right? <clears throat> so that's a cool thing. Um, I'll spend some more time with these guys, obviously. That's a thing. This little guy is a set of scales. It's just a Spydeco Para 3, but it's a set of scales from RG Custom uh, Machine Works, who does uh, these incredible uh, radial scales. I have them on a PM2, and this recently showed up. He engraved the gem of his own accord, which is a very bold move, but it actually is, well, true here. I'll, I'll post a full uh, video of him. Actually, I'll post the disassembly, which turned out because of a peened lanyard hole to be an odyssey. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a very, very nice pair of scales. Um, I have been very happy with this, and the Para 3 is a knife that is much more in my size range. I am hoping that the next one out of him is actually for the Spydeco Delica, because oh my god, that would be great. But at the same time, I, I, I've been very happy with this little knife, um, and it really classes up a, a knife that is, you know, a, a very good performer in daily life. Okay, uh, let me introduce, uh, well, actually, hold on, uh, while we're at it, one of the things that I'm very sensitive to is that, you know, especially as I have less and less time to review, I don't want to just review really expensive stuff. And this is a knife that has actually come very highly recommended. Tony Scullambrini over at Everyday Commentary um, had made a very, very favorable article. This is the CJRB Pyrite. It's in their AR RPM 9 steel, which is solid. It's a, a little um, a thumb study kind of knife. It's a button lock. It's really good. I totally get why he was big time into it. And you know what? I wanted to check one out as well. So I picked one of these guys up. I just went ahead and bought it. Um, thank you, Patreon patrons. 
trying to kind of reduce a little bit uh, some of the reliance on manufacturer sent goods, just because, you know, why not, right? Um, that, 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 that seems maybe like the best choice. But anyways, uh, that, to, to be clear, sent by the manufacturer, sent by the manufacturer, sent by the manufacturer, this one I bought. Uh, nonetheless, it, it's a thing. He says hypocritically. No, um, but anyways, I, I'm trying to do that. But more importantly, this is a cool knife that I'm really enjoying. This is a budget knife that is way better than it has any right to be. Um, and so I, I do like this a lot. Um, and so I'm looking forward to spending some more time with it, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I've been very impressed there. A couple of elephants in the room. This little guy right here <clears throat> is the Herman Knives Micro Sting. This is spectacular. Um, Herman Knives, as you all know, is a company that I'm a big fan of. And now that they have finally made a knife that is a little bit more in my size range, uh, oh my god. God, is it good. I am very, very happy about that. Um, this is in the size range that I most prefer. Um, even the Sting itself was a much bigger knife, and this is, you know, delicate size. It's done beautifully, as is every Herman. The materials are really well done. The action is absolutely solid. The blade is beautifully thin. I... I'm going to find some negative things to say about it, I'm sure, but so far, I, I mean, okay, the one thing is that the Damascus intersects the blade in two places here, but with Damacor, it's not that big. Anyways, that's about all I got here. Uh, this has been a knife that I have been carrying with joy. Um, it is a great freaking knife, and it's my favorite Herman yet, just on the basis of the size. Being a little bit better suited to those of us with the smaller hands. So that's a beautiful thing. Next up, this guy. This is uh, a pen from Smooth Precision Pens. This is uh, a follow-up. So I reviewed the uh, Dragon Scale, uh, this guy right here, uh, sometime. Or I featured the Dragon Scale one. This is actually a smaller version that I bought for myself because I freaking love this pattern. Um, then Kelvin sent this guy along. This is their latest version, and it's called the Valhalla. The Valhalla is meant to be a basket weaving, like Celtic weave pattern, right? Because it kind of curls around the top and then is constantly. This is grippy. Like, this is crazy grippy. And not in the sense of, like, it's unpleasant, right? And it's also very light, right? This There's been a lot of pocketing done to this guy. There's a lot of machining that's gone on, including, by the way, if you look in the middle there... You can actually see it is like there there are separate little machining tracks in the middle there, so it really does look like reeds here. But uh, instead, it's it's right. Get it? Reeds, not right. Uh, okay. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so this is a really cool freaking pen. Um, it is. Uh, so it's just a different pattern, right? The, the the core of it is the same smooth precision pens that we have come to know and love. And again, for those of you who are just catching up, smooth precision pens is a is the new venture from the folks uh, formerly behind Urban Survival Gear. They have rebranded, and uh, oh boy, are they hitting hard. Uh, and so this is just a cool cool, cool freaking pen. Uh, and so I figured I'd, I'd show that one off. And then finally, there's this guy, the uh, rask in the room, so to speak. So I throw it everywhere. This is why I shouldn't be trusted with sharp objects yet. This right here is the Grimsmo Knives Rask. Ah, damn it. The anodization pattern on this is very, very sensitive to oil and things like that. So as a result, uh, it'll take a little bit to show off, but this, I, I've been on the uh, Grimsmo Rask mailing list now, the maker's choice for years, <laughs> basically since the Rask came back. And finally, I got drawn, and this was in the, the uh, this was in the, the selection that I was said. They've moved now from, rather than just like, do you like this one, to do you like any of these eight or so? And this is the one I chose, um, partly because I like the anodization. This gold into purple is very nice, and I hope that's getting across on the camera, but I gotta say, I am very impressed. This is not only a sweet action, as one would hope from, from the Grimsmos, but it shows a lot of progress, right? They now have a sharpening choil. The edge of this is impossibly thin. No, I mean, it's very possible. It's even plausible. But it's a very, very thin edge, which is a beautiful thing. It now includes a lock bar insert, right? You can see lock bar insert is right there. Um, it's just a really, really, and even more skeletonized, this is a very, very, very good knife. Uh, beyond any shadow of a doubt. The question of whether it's uh, a knife that's worth paying, you know, north of $1,000 for now at retail, that's a separate one. And it is lock bar sensitive, right? Lock bar pressure definitely does affect things. And that's the big question I'm going to be asking during my review. But in terms of actual manufacture, 
this is a very good knife. They have done a lot of work here, and it shows. And it, So it's a really excellent piece. Uh, the question is just whether it's worth that money in RWL34. But anyway, so I finally picked up another Rask. I'm partly, honestly, uh, I'm going to be real here. Part of the reason I did this is because I want to support the Grimsmos. I think they do really cool work. I've had a Norseman for a long time. It's been an you know important part of my collection. And, you know, I figured, you know what, why not, right? If I can support artists, especially at a tough time, I might as well. Um, and so I did do this, and thanks to my patrons who make these kinds of things possible. But anyways, so these are, this is some of the stuff that is slated for review in the next little while. And it ranges from the budget to the uh, bougie. Uh, it ranges from, you know, pens to watches to every other kind of thing. I have been way behind. I'm hoping to catch up at some point in time, but I'm also trying to be kind to myself because... That was a lot. Um, and uh, But nonetheless, I, I hope you understand and appreciate. I'll keep throwing some stuff from the backlog, and hopefully I'll be able to get back into a rhythm here. And this is <coughs> probably the longest I've gone without coughing for a while. So anyways, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Uh, have a good one, everybody. Bye now.